Time's up. Let's do this. Welcome, 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 everybody. It's episode 123 of Born to be Wild, a wild exclusive Hearthstone podcast where we have fun hanging out with friends, talking about the wild format of Hearthstone and spotlighting members of the wild community. I'm your host, as always, Nate Wolf. It is great to be back on another beautiful Friday evening here, joining you from Portland, Oregon. Um, Hydralisk is not with us tonight. He is stuck at work, but uh, I do have two very good friends with me tonight. Yeah. So welcome back, uh, my good friend, Blue Train. It's great to see you. How are you tonight? Well, thank you for having me on once again. Always, huh? you're like it's nice to it's nice to have it's nice to be on with you guys being present and not being like the 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 lone man in the room with the microphone. When we were in Hawaii, we were on this like we were waiting for this luau to start, and we were on this tram at the at the hotel that was like at so the big Hilton down there where the luau is they have this like monorail type thing that kind of goes around and just you can see all the crazy stuff. And uh, we had like half an hour to kill, so we're sitting on it. And I have my phone out, kind of watching, watching you. Uh, I, I was, um, I was there like incognito. I didn't want to type in the chat because I, I th- thought I would get chastised for watching while I was on vacation. But uh, it was, it was very nice of you. And see, I saw what happened to Hydra because. He he was on like date night with his wife, and uh, and he checked in. It was like, yeah, you know what? It was like, uh, no, 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 we can't do that. Bad, bad, Get bad. Out. Yeah, get out. And so, uh, but anyways, I I always um, I hate skipping episodes. That was very nice of you to to jump in and do that. So thank you. We ch- we chat all the time, but uh, I really appreciate you covering for us. It was very nice. I appreciate you trusting me to represent the brand. I had the logo it was official and everything, right? Right. You didn't have to murgurgle me once either, which is which I was is good. I was impressed. Yeah. I. You know what? It was really fun though because I I don't normally like listen to our episodes after we record them because like I just talked through it, uh, and this time I got to listen to it all, and that was fun for me. Something nice to do. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. Right on. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, happy to see you. And of course, um, eSheep City, welcome back. How are you? Meowdy, friends, and hello on this like cool Colorado evening. Like, what is it actually going to be fall? Like, d- did I move to a place with seasons? What is this madness? Seasons? Yeah, it is almost. Um, it is almost the fall, isn't it? Summer's over. School started. My son started school this week. Uh, and yeah, has Labor like Day. It? It was my birthday that was fun yeah uh, one year older uh, uh yeah he actually likes it he said that this is his uh second favorite teacher he said but she's doing she's she's great as a teacher he said and he's having a good time and so. she's got a lot of time to usurp into that number one spot so she, <laughs> she, she's got a lot of make it or break it time so <laughs> right schmoopy schmoopy's back at work yeah it's it's a uh, school time for for the children school's back from summer alice School's out full ever. All right, that's thankfully it's kind of not, the opposite, Shmo- right? Shmoopy of... still has has a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry we we uh went down a rabbit hole. Apologies. Yeah, it was definitely one worth exploring. So, for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. Let me briefly explain how the show works. We record this podcast live every Friday evening at twitch.tv slash born to be wild hearthstone. It's actually twitch.tv slash born to be wild HS. I just spelled them out. The video version of this podcast is then posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. Audio versions are also distributed to all of the podcast apps. So however you're watching or listening or absorbing via osmosis this podcast today. Thank you. Yes, you. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, especially thank you to those who are joining us live on Twitch. It's always great to interact with you um, during the recording. Thank you, everyone, who's like watching later on YouTube or listening to the audio version of this podcast. Uh, sometimes we say it, sometimes I don't, but I definitely recommend the video version if you can, because we have visuals on the screen while we're talking. And especially when we're talking about decks or we'll be talking about some nerfs tonight, we can see the before and after. And sometimes the visuals help, uh, for people like me who are visual, um, 
kind of talkers, learners, whatever. Uh, it's helpful. Th though I will say, uh, absorbing via osmosis is actually really good for nerf discussions. So <laughs> if, if that's your chosen method of consuming the podcast, like kudos. If you can absorb the podcast via osmosis, please like tell me your secrets because I would like to learn. Anyways, a uh, big giant uh, thank you to Shokunin. Uh, as the executive producer of our show, thank you so much for your support. And also thank you to our patrons uh, over on Patreon. Your support means the world to us. Actually, our the website fees just increased. I got an email about that. And I was like, no. Um, but anyways, uh, we really appreciate your support. It, it it means the world. And so thank you for, for helping out your uh, local wild podcast over here. Um, if you are interested in supporting the show, just very, very quickly... Um, if you leave, leave us a like, a comment, subscribe on YouTube, that helps. If you leave you know, comments or, or feedback on iTunes or Spotify or, or whatever podcast app, that also helps um, just to get people to uh, find the show. Also, if you're interested in, in any merch at all, we do have some merch on our shop. And look at these beautiful people wearing our shirts. What? Um, Shmoopy Daddy, Shmoopy Mommy over here in their Born to be Wild gear. Uh, love to see it. And so... Uh, can you wear that to school, by the way? Um, but uh, I, I'd love to see it. If you're interested in all that stuff can be found on our website, born to be wild Um If you are also interested in supporting the show, if you're someone who's on Twitch a lot, we do have emotes. There's a bunch of free ones that you can get just for following. There's some that you can get for subscribing um, that you can uh, do for free if you've got um, Amazon Prime. Anyways, super cool. Uh, again, born to be about hs.com. I uh, got an interesting comment on YouTube over the past week. Someone was commenting on one of the lore episodes. And so if you're joining us for the first time, you knew you're interested in lore, the stories behind the Hearthstone cards. Um, we've got a whole bunch of episodes. They're all on YouTube, but the links, like all of that stuff is on the website. If you go over to our website, there's all kinds of cool stuff. So check it out. Also, finally, if you're interested in inter interacting with us, any of us personally, we do have a discord server that uh, you can join again the link is on our website and we can post it in chat here but uh, the link is on our website and we have a lot of fun discussing um, well all kinds of stuff tv and movies books uh, jokes we share screenshots and deck lists and all that fun stuff so if you're interested in hanging out with us join up uh, the discord and yeah that's the end of my sales pitch so thank thank you all for being here tonight we I'll are take gonna, 12 you want 12 emotes or 12 uh shirts or 12 uh, that was the end yes. of your sales pitch. So I, I, I want oh, 12 of all of it. That's more than two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So um, we're going to talk about nerfs tonight, but a couple, a couple other things to, to, to touch on first. So some, some fun things. Um, it happened last weekend, but I hit legend. That was fine. That was very fun. I, I did quite terribly. Congrats on your first legend. <laughs> it was my first legend of this month. <laughs> Every legend feels like your first legend. The relief is palpable. You know what? It's true. I I still kind of get like that. It is true. It's it's not as bad with the eleven X. I will say because you get two stars, and so it's not quite the same. Uh, yeah. So this is interesting. Dark Cry saying he was just I was destroying with Big Priest. I I played Big Priest up until Diamond Five because I just didn't know what else to play. Like I was playing. I tried Reno Druid, I tried Reno Priest, and they just, like, the games take half an hour, and they're fun, but when you lose a game that took half an hour, like, it's kind of depressing. And I was like, alright, forget it. Nothing was really clicking. And so, I played Big Priest because I can kind of play it on, like, autopilot. The mirror matches mm -hmm. are horrendous, and it's super high rolly. I know it feels bad to lose to, and people complain about it being like OP broken, but like my win rate to D5 was like 45%. Uh, it was terrible. And the games that you win, it's like, hey, yeah, you draw Illuminate and you draw Shadow Essence and you draw um, the mana reduction stuff, palm reading, whatever it is, like, okay. And there's games that like, yeah, I've got a full board on turn three and it's disgusting, but my win rate was pretty bad. And... And so at D5, um, like we were in the Discord hanging out all day and I'm sitting here watching. Uh, zombies hit Legend with Even Shaman. I'm like, I'm just going to play the same deck. I've been watching him play. I feel like I can pilot it now. And Zombies hit Legend and the came in really, like what, I think at 50 or something like that. It was, it was, uh. was pretty great. And, and then um, 
I just copied his deck list <laughs> and, uh, and, and played the same exact deck and did incredible. Was it 82% win rate from D5 to Legend? And just sailed through my two. I had two losses from D5 to Legend, and they were both against Quest Mage and everything and else. And zombies. If you're still in here, I'm still not a believer. <laughs> the deck, the, the win rate is what sold me on it because I had played a couple games early on and I kept getting, I was getting high rolled and are just destroyed and i i was like this is unplayable i don't know what kool-aid y'all are drinking but it's not working for me and then i i tried it again later and just i sailed through i don't know the win rate you know what it is i'll tell you what i think is that it punishes the greedy janky like renathal decks because it's fast and that's what i was doing it was like yeah like schmoopy says is keeping the greed in check um, I think, yeah, I think the other factor is optimization. So optimization of the list and probably more important for this deck than others, optimization of the mulligan. In a deck that yes. has limited draw, the way you mulligan is going to really influence um, your win rate. And uh, it turns out that uh, even though there are not 30 ideal cards for even Shaman, it doesn't matter because you're only ever going to be drawing, you know, three or four of them. Just draw the good cards, and the good cards turn out to be the the new cards. Chisel. <laughs> the chisel is one, is so. like the main. Yeah. One, so right? good. The, we were, I think, almost always like looking for chisel in the mulligan. Every oh, yeah. once in a while, like I would keep the uh, the legendary. What is she called? The 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 chisel holder, right? Uh, the stone right stone right thank you see this mm. is, means the same thing, right? My old eyes. I'm sitting here trying to read it on the screen, and I can't see anything. Um, <laughs> I the stone right I would keep if I had the coin maybe if I had a you know turn one turn two play but there was a lot of times when we would um, have the stone right in the mulligan and just toss her back because it's just too slow but it I don't know the deck worked um, Giga Totem is pretty rad especially with the splitting axe and it it punishes the greedy decks I worry a little bit. How, like, I, I mean, we'll see. We'll talk about nerfs in a minute. But anyways, I I copied Zombies' homework, hung out in chat with Blue Train Zombies and OTZ, and and just sailed through. And I'm glad I did. But because my <laughs> because my win rate from like bronze through D5 was like atrocious. I came in at 102, and it that was last Saturday, I think it was. And today I'm like right at 200. And so I'm going to have to play a bunch to like fix my MMR. Otherwise I think I'm going to um, lose a bunch of ranks and stuff. So I'll be playing a bunch this weekend, but uh, it was fun. It was good. Um, happy to uh, hit legend on my birthday. That made me feel special. So yeah. Yeah, Anyways, buddy. That's me. That's, that's been the week. I've been playing a ton of battlegrounds. I'll be honest with you. I uh, have been, having a lot of fun with it. it's like equal parts fun and infuriating um like we we experienced right like i blue was kind of complaining about it last night and i agree they offer you these quests and then they don't give you the cards to complete the quest and it's it's like gee thanks but uh i don't know i'm a little bit irritated that they had the legendary quest also that you can only unlock the skin if you get first place in battlegrounds like there you're gonna now you got two weeks to do it, but you're gonna exclude I think a lot of the more casual players. And I got it, but it took a long time. And so yeah. I got it as well, but I was thinking that if I didn't get it before the podcast, that after you know the show tonight, we could try and cheese it by doing a uh, <laughs> hey. a friendly lobby and then just kind of trade off who got the skin. <laughs> Will it award it if it's a private lobby, or does it have to be in a in an MMR game? I imagine I that it awards it in a private lobby. I I didn't get to test it because I I already got the skin, but <laughs> right. I don't know. Well, That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Maybe we'll do a science experiment after the after the show. Yeah, buddy. For science. <laughs> <laughs> glorious. <laughs> All glorious. No terrible. Right. All right, so Blue, uh, you hit Legend. You hit Legend this past weekend, right, as well? 
Yeah, I played a lot of Hearthstone last weekend. Uh, I did a stream for over seven hours. And uh, oh yeah, hit Legend on both NA and EU and almost on a third account, uh, my, my, my alt account, Night Train. So we did a... We did a NHL NJ fan. My my friend got very excited about a deck that he helped find. People call it Enrage Warrior, Angry Warrior, Copium Warrior. Big mad. Um, and <laughs> I've got an aggro deck for you. You're going to like it. And I'm like, it's Warrior. Like, how could a Warrior deck without Raid the Docks, like, get me to play it, right? And, wow. There hasn't been and, a good Warrior deck in ages. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it turns out that uh, Crab Rider, the savior of the Wild Hearthstone meta, didn't disappoint. And we had a crazy run. So between the two of us on 311X Legend Climbs, over 100 games, uh, a win rate well comfortably into the into the 60s i don't remember what it, it was like 62 or 63 percent so the deck is is real how good is it in the grand scheme i don't know um but definitely there's there's something there that's viable if you're looking to try something different um and and the seven hour stream was uh marking a a, a special occasion not not a birthday but almost a birthday of sorts two days ago was the uh <laughs> Uh, two days ago was the two-year anniversary where I lost most of my eyesight. And uh, last year, on the first anniversary of this, we did an all-day stream with NHL and Gasu, and we had a good time, and, and, and we kind of on a whim said, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do it again? And so we did it again, and it, and it was a good time, although I think we both agreed that seven hours is unhealthy, and, and I don't think <laughs> a lot of people get it. Uh, yeah. That's more than two. <laughs> I've done it a couple of times, the super long ones, and it's just too long. I think, you know, but yeah, I got to hang out for the one that was uh, over, I think it was last weekend, whatever day that yeah, was. Yeah, that was a set. Yeah, you popped in for a, for a little while. It was, it was on your birthday. It was on my actually. birthday, right? Uh, yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had well, to leave because we, we were going out thing. to dinner. Yeah, that was fun, though. Exactly. It was good. Yeah, it was a good time. I mean, man, we crushed it uh, with that Enrage Warrior. And then after we finished with Enrage Warrior, I switched to Hunter on my alt account. And I was just crushing it there as well. So, you know, kind of, uh, you know, we've got that Wild Brawl seam coming up, and I think there's a lot of deck diversity in Wild, and mm -hmm. I think that'll probably continue post-nerfs. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, yeah, I mean, this Enrage Warrior was winning games. A tricky deck to pilot. I probably wouldn't, I would probably veer more towards the Hunter, even Shaman, Inner Fire Priest by virtue of those decks just being easier to play but like you know the enrage warrior felt a lot it felt kind of similar to inner fire priest in terms of play pattern win conditions but understanding break points and sequencing your plays is a lot more challenging um and 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 this is why i don't believe in even shaman right every deck i play just dunks even shaman i queue into a shaman gen goes off and it's a win mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if it's by virtue of the decks I'm playing, and a lot of people have noticed this phenomenon as well. And we thought maybe it was the Pirate Warrior effect at first, that even Shaman does really well at lower ranks, then drops off. But, like, I mean... I don't know. That's not that's not really proven to be true by people who are who are piloting it and playing it, and, and, mm -hmm. and you're seeing it a lot more commonly. I mean, it, it is... A lot of people saw the Tempo Storm report, meta report that came out, day or two ago with even shaman being the sole deck in tier one they're like how could this be and, and it's like look i get why you don't think that it's the best deck but like the data certainly supports it empirical experience from from good players supports it so i mean at a certain point you have to concede that 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 you know your feelings might be wrong on the subject except mine i'm always right and I still don't <laughs> believe deck, but, but yeah i think i think that there's there's a lot of interesting decks that you can be playing right now um, and it turns out that post Big Rogue nerf, Wild's probably the best it's been in a really long time, and that's awesome. Yeah, especially it's wild, uh, wild West. <laughs> especially considering how how bad standards been by comparison. Yeah, you know what was funny with Even Shot? Like I was facing all these greedy like Reno decks and Renathal decks, and especially I think people were on that Reno like Thief Priest train. And we still are. And, I mean, yeah. and playing as as even shaman was just hilarious like yeah dude steal my 
cards that buff your totems and uh, give your totems buffs for the rest of the game and copy your totems. Like, they're just garbage. Good job. And, and like, Theotar <laughs> was hilarious. Like, sure, take my terrible cards. Um, so Theotar, Theotar is, like, the new alignment. Not that it has any kind of similar play pattern, but, like, the joke, Thankfully. the old running joke used to be, ah, they played alignment into lose. Wonderful. When we were doing our <laughs> legend climb with the, with the warrior and the hunter, like... Theotar and Toulouse became the new meme because, like, you're playing this aggressive deck. They slam Theotar, and it's like, it's like, it's like getting a, an extra turn practically. They, yeah. they take a card. <laughs> who cares? You just kind of take like, my battle rage or whatever it is. Yeah, and uh, send a bunch of people face, and uh, you know, win the game the following turn. So I had a um, I had a, a Reno Priest player dirty rat my gen on turn two <laughs> and then shame concede it was so great <laughs> amazing that's incredible <laughs> so so yeah it, it was a good time and, and nhl is a good sport he was there for the entire seven and a half hours um that is and, and we, we didn't we didn't plan on on doing it but you know we were having a good time and sometimes too much of a good thing can be a bad thing but uh, it was a lot of fun um you popped in uh, uh 6j popped in for nice. for a little bit um and 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 really like you know i we've been friends for a long time nate and 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 but a lot of people that that i've met in the wild community was kind of after this whole thing happened where i lost my eyesight because i was off work i had more time and hearthstone just because of the way that my my vision's afflicted I can still, it's a little bit of a struggle, but I can still enjoy playing Hearthstone where other games I can't. Mm. Uh, so, so you know, it's been a good good way of um, diverting attention over these past few years and certainly all the wonderful people that uh, make up this community, the Born to be Wild community, the broader Wild community have all been really, really awesome. Um, and uh, it, it really is a great group. And uh, except, I, I am... Except I am, Gasu. I, not not Gasu. He's uh, just except, a big problem, right? <laughs> yeah, except and, and, except big priest playing I'm, Chicago pizza, sympathizing, um, anime watching Gasu. Yeah, oh God. Gasu. I'm joking. We love you, Gasu. I uh, I just finished that. So there's a movie called Perfume: The Story of a Murder or whatever, and I just finished, I love that movie. It's so good. I just finished the book, and the book is even better. And that's really good too. And that's basically oh you read it too. And that's Gasu except uh -huh. except with flavors, right? That's what Gasu does. Right? Instead yeah. of making perfume, it makes flavors. Uh and I was like, hmm. This if, uh Gasu, if you are responsible for voodoo, I, I appreciate you. Flaming Hot Cheeto Mountain Dew. Is that you, Gasu? No. <laughs> v voodoo is is an annual tradition that I hold dear. Flaming hot mountain dew is is a meme and it's it's disappointing how it's not like actively terrible oh my gosh that's a uh, yeah that's that's incredible well yeah no the wild community i think is what has kept me around for so long yeah. because the game is fun but like the game has a lot of ups and downs and it's been mm -hmm. i think the people really that have have uh kept us coming back more than the game <laughs> at times yeah yeah absolutely agreed i think that the game like most games as a service has ha, does have its ups and downs times that you're more and less invested but the the one one thing that i haven't been you know uh at all salty about or or <laughs> apprehensive towards is the wild community itself so it's good it's good we love you gasu by the way all right so there's um, you might. there's <laughs> what <laughs> Well, uh, what did I say here? Well said. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Um, there was some runestone stuff that happened. So, by the way, you did a great job talking about runestones on your solo podcast pop-up yeah. episode. Thank you. I think to the extent that like we didn't really talk about them that much the next week because you covered it all, uh, so, which was great. But So, yeah, as a segue to that. So, I kind of my takeaway was, okay, they did the thing and they played the trust me bro card and i said all right we'll watch what you do i've heard what you said but i'm gonna watch you mm -hmm. so since since that has happened there have been bundles that have been put for sale in the shop for mercenaries and i believe some things 
other areas as well. I'm not sure because I don't recall, but definitely for mercenaries that you have to purchase more runestones than the bundle in mercenaries. And prior to the runestones piece, you could buy the mercenary bundles for, you know, cash, exact cash. So right. the very thing that they, they basically said, trust me, bro, I got you. No, no, no. So um, I don't want to harp too much on this because it is a bit negative. But, you know, let's continue to watch. Maybe this was an aberration. I don't believe it was. But right now I'd say that the onus is on Blizzard. I don't want to refer to any group or, or particular because it's not clear to me who makes these decisions. But mm -hmm. as a as a holistic entity, they'll have to show us this was an aberration by mercenary bundles rotate on a weekly basis. I'd like to see those bundles be in line with the runestones that are being sold. Um, but uh, I kind of alluded to this earlier. I am pausing on mercenaries for the time being. I, I am I'm going to be taking a break. And, and I remember you said something a long time ago, Sheep, on an earlier episode about your relationship with mercenaries. And you're like, I bought the I bought the cards, I did the thing, but I'm never going to subscribe to like a sunk cost fallacy and I'm taking a step back. Mm -hmm. And and I, I would say that uh, I'm, I'm in the same boat. That's not to say I'll never return, mm -hmm. but, you know, there were some challenges with the game mode that existed. We won't get into it. I think we've talked about it over past episodes at, at nauseum. But the, the, the bundle thing kind of really got me because it already was fairly premium priced. Mm -hmm. And this kind of just takes you for a little more. Now, you can argue, well, you're going to buy other things. So it'll all balance out in the end, you know, the runestones that you collect and keep. And eh, I don't know if I if I necessarily I buy that. I've been, figuratively and literally. <laughs> I've been I was super irritated with it because this week. Okay, so so check it out. Here's I'm gonna put up on the screen real quick. Um, uh, okay, how can I do this? Uh, okay, so here's the here's the um, the the web store showing the uh, the rune stones, and so they're bundles, right? Five hundred for for four ninety nine, a thousand for nine ninety nine, fifteen hundred for fourteen ninety nine. These are the these US. Are US. Prices. Yeah, these are US. Yeah, yeah. but um, what's frustrating is so this week there was two bundles that came out in hearthstone proper that were um cosmetic they were skins plus packs right so i think it was druid okay yeah like the the, the and, like you uh, get the five druid pack bundles those yep. ones yeah and okay. they yeah. were and they were like weird costs i don't remember what they were anymore they're not up on the website which is frustrating um but they were it, it was like it wasn't some normal number right it was like i right, does someone know how much they cost uh, they, they were they I were a thousand check. runestones each because if you bought the two thousand bundle then you could get both of them and not have any extra. Oh, was it? Was it? There was mm -hmm. other stuff though. Fifteen fifteen hundred for the magical guardian elite. Oh yeah, that's right. That one was a little more as well. Um, there was something else though this week where it was like there was multiple bundles plus there was um, was there skins and battlegrounds or there was something right? And I was like, Ugh. what I wanted to do was just to go. I, I love being able to just buy the stuff and yeah. you know, my card is already hooked up to the thing and I could just hit buy and use my, you know, Apple, whatever it is. <laughs> I give you this money. You give me these JPEGs and we are happy. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, except now it's like, Oh, well, if I want to get the stuff, then like I, I now have to have like rune stones in the bank and there's uh like, I guess I just have to buy, like, a bundle of runestones and then just sit on some so that when they release stuff, I can, I can use those. And now, I hate so doing can, that. I mean... So, in fairness to those bundles, you can... So, you can buy mm -hmm. a 1,000 runestones or 1,500 runestones. Yeah. So, those those bundles, um, the portrait bundles, are... You don't, ha you don't have a surplus. However, yeah. you've got the... the the golden standard bundle, mini golden bundle, and the standard bundle, those were for 5,000, 2,500, and 1,000. Uh, I don't think you can get 5,000 rune stones. Uh, no, you can. You 5,000. Can. You can't get 2,500. So the mini golden bundle, just 2,500 rune stones, you'd have to, you'd have to get uh, 
500 and 2,000. So you, it's still it's still even, but now you've got to make two separate purchases to make one if you want to get it exact exact. What's goofy it, here is that normally you would think like if I bought eighty dollars worth or eight thousand rune stones that like mm -hmm. like I y'all have Costco in in Canada or Sam's Club or one of the like right. So the whole we reason that you get you you buy like in bulk is you get a deal right. You you ideally you. When you spend a little bit more, you get a little extra. And if I'm buying this bundle, like there's zero savings. It's just even. Yeah. And so like, and, I, and I've heard for other currencies uh, um, that it, it's cheaper to just buy a whole bunch of the 500 runestones bundles. Like, yeah, it's, it's technically cheaper to do that in USD too, but it's, it's diminishing returns at that point. Cause it's like one cent cheaper. Yeah. Per... I mean, it's not really that worth it, but like, uh, it, it it's kind of sad that well and even then I think in the old shop right it the like the bigger bundles that you got the better value you got right because wasn't it uh you look here at the packs oh I yeah I mean oh. for for packs um and that's still true now like if you were to to dump more rune stones you would get more packs for your rune stones um but yeah, right because you yeah yeah but there's no there's no like I don't know. There's no savings, right, for buying the big bundle or anything like that. And I, I don't know. The battleground skins also. Someone mentioned they were uh, 150 runestones each, and so it just leaves you with an odd dollar amount. And so really, what it encourages is like, well, you just you buy more than you need, and then you have to stockpile it. And even here, you see my battle. You see, look at this up in the corner. If you can see, it's really small. But like, I have a battle net balance of five dollars and twelve cents that's like never going to get spent. Um, and like welcome to runestones it's the same thing <laughs> yeah so i don't and, know and and like you were saying there's there's no incentive for me as a consumer to buy more right like i i'm i'm only going to spend as many as i'm going to actually use at any given time because i'm not incentivized to do so otherwise i i understand why they're doing it but i mean i'm a consumer why do i have to play ball with that right like <laughs> i'm only going to spend what you know, actually benefits me as the consumer there. And if I'm not getting anything extra for spending more, I'm I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, so that that was a little disappointing because we're already seeing a trajectory um, of that kind of practice that we were unhappy to see. Mm -hmm. Someone said to me, well, other mobile games does this. So, you know, and, and other mobile games that I play do this. So isn't it a little bit hypocritical of me to to be um, holding Hearthstone to a higher standard? No, yeah. I think Hearthstone sh has always been the standard with which, you know, uh, digital card games should emulate both from experience mm -hmm. to accessibility to, to just fun and and so something that made them stand out as you know emphasizing quality has kind of unfortunately diminished and again you know it's unfortunate because i'm sure that the people who made the arguments that it was meant to so sell smaller items um i'm sure there's some truth to that but then we see odd pricing and it kind of makes that less believable and I mean, it's been what, two weeks? Has it only been two weeks? Two weeks. It's only two been weeks. two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to rant too much about it, but we'll have to kind of watch and see. I, what I'm really curious about is like, we're on the precipice of a mini set, right? And how much is that going to cost? And is it going to be the same price point as last time or not? And. I mean, they said it would. Well, they and you still be able. To, I think this one last time, you'll still be able to buy it for cash. Directly. Yeah, yeah. Not for the mini set. For the gold, I think the, the golden one you can, but the mm -hmm. regular one is either gold or rune stones. If I so recall, so it was only correctly. the battle pass that they offered for cash this one last time for oh, the battle. Pass. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Oh, well, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, I mean, we'll just have to watch. I, I'm. I'm curious to see if uh, there's there's like sneaky inflation and it's I mean, even then you see it like there's one penny. It's one penny here, one penny there. And I don't think it probably makes much of a difference, but you never know. Whatever. Mm -hmm. eh, anyhow, any more any more thoughts on runestones before we talk about the nerves? <laughs> I, I was wondering uh, in the pre-show what, what y'all were kind of like hinting at about things being like really weird because, you know, like I'm. I'm 
the battlegrounds stuff is a little odd, but you know, it didn't stand out as like a crazy aberration to me. But I haven't been jumping into mercenaries, so the fact that oh. I, I hadn't seen that, like that, explained everything. Whenever you, you kind of fleshed out uh, a little bit more of your experience there, it's like, oh, oh, that makes sense. Well, and with mercenaries, because there's no. Um, duplicate protection and right. it's that kind of gotcha mode and the packs are pretty much worthless because uh, you're just going to get a bunch of coins that you don't need. If you're looking for cosmetics, pretty much the only way to get them, at least guaranteed, yep. is through the bundles. And so, okay, like I bought the Queen Ajara bundle because I, I'm still missing a couple of skins and I was hoping for the diamond one. I didn't get it, but like um, that's, that's like your best bet. And yeah, I mean, and then I opened 15 or 20 packs and it's, I got all coins. It's like, Oh, cool. Thanks. That's just what I needed. I have 20 plus thousand, uh, coins for Cario, like that I'll never be able to do anything with. Right. <laughs> and, um, I know, I mean, I know they're talking about a way to do stuff with the coins later and, and I'm curious to see what it is when it happens, but yeah, they're weird dollar amounts, and so they don't match up with the. Um, yeah, they don't match up with the runestone offerings, right? They, you know, yeah. they they don't, and it and so it makes it a little bit um, kind of funky. And so what I ended up having to do is like I just bought a bigger bundle of runestones, and now I'm sitting on some, which I I guess is okay, but like there's a there's a coin bundle for twelve hundred runestones. That's not even. There's one old God's portraits for two thousand, so you can get that for like the same amount. Three thousand for this portrait. I don't think you can buy three thousand rune stones. So like already, like some of the more prominent actually let me see. Three thousand. Yeah, three thousand you can buy two thousand or five thousand. So you've already got like half the things in like the Merc shop that are, are odd amount priced. What's yeah. funky is you can't, I, I would do it if they let me, but when you buy the rune stones, like you, you don't add them to your cart, like you purchase them. And so I, I'd have to purchase 500, 500, 500, 500, <laughs> you know, if yeah. I could take 500 and then add it to my cart, like, you know, 10 times or whatever, like I would do that. But then it's me who's now getting nickel and dimed. And then. You know, my wife is asking me, like, why did you buy 15 Hearthstone bundles or 10 Hearthstone bundles? And I'm like, well, I'm just trying to save money. Like, I save a it. nickel. <laughs> yeah, that would be 15 whole cents you save with that 15. No, and I'm not going to do that, <laughs> right? But it's, right. it's exactly. just a, you know, I mean, a, whatever. Yeah. And how? Yeah. All right. So we, we got some patch notes today. It was kind of funny because there was all this... I don't want to call it drama, but there was some drama going back and forth. Can we, it... can we just talk about the drama for a second? You know, the wild community has a bad rap of being um, a bunch of crying whiners. Yeah, we can't tie our shoes either. Yeah, well, I'll just say that, like, delay the patch notes for a standard focus patch per day. And, <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. For real. Twitter was best avoided <laughs> yesterday. Holy moly. Um, got it. You got to feel for the. You got to feel for the folks. Um, I can't believe that they pushed it all through. Like, I feel like they got bullied into pushing out the patch notes before they were they, ready. They to do did. That. I, I, I was, agree. We were talking about this last night with zombies on Discord, Nate. But like, I'll, I'll, I'll be really brief about this. But it doesn't matter if you're developing software for games, consumer products, medical devices. You never push a patch out on a Friday. It's just no. not an industry best practice. And so there's only two reasons why they pushed this out on a Friday. Reason one, it was supposed to come out earlier this week and it got delayed. But given Deck Tech's kind of like cookie crumbs that he kind of led for us, it, it seems that they pulled it in. And yeah. I mean, given the voracious feedback online, you know, Another weekend of 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 the howling at, at it being, you know, the following Tuesday. Could you imagine? People would have been like burning tire fires, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, so yeah. So they're asking, what is what 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 was the drama? The drama is they were talking about there being balance change, and then the question was, okay, well, when are we going to know what it is? And they were like, well, next week sometime. And then there was all this anticipation. When's it going to be? When's it going to be? And they kept kind of um, 
uh, being a little ambiguous because they didn't want to nail down a date that they couldn't deliver on, which makes sense. Right. Well, and they, I think we're a little bit vague. We're trying to figure out what they were going to be. And they said, Hey, we're going to nail in uh, the nerfs by Friday. And then we'll of last week of last week. And then we'll let you all know, you know, the patch notes will, will follow. And, and then the actual patch will, will follow like the Tuesday after that. And just like Twitter was a big raging dumpster fire of complaining people. And uh, I, I, I honestly, I think it kind of bullied them or prompted them into doing this stuff early because it changed then from now we're going to release the patch notes and the patch on the same day. On a Friday. On a Friday. Is this the first time we've ever had like a patch like this on a Friday? I, I think it is. Like, like we've, yeah. we've gotten patch notes in the patch on the same day before, but that's that's been like a Thursday or a Tuesday, you know, something like that. Never patch notes and patch on Friday. I, I, I think I, I don't have, you know, the dates and everything in front of me, but I, I can't ever remember that happening before. Usually what would happen in my recollection, now this is anecdotal, but like we would see the patch notes or, or announcements like on a Friday and then the yeah. patch the next Tuesday is kind of yeah. what would be typical blue for those people who don't understand um the rationale can you explain why it is a bad idea to to push out a patch on a friday so i mean in simple terms no matter how basic or simple the software patch is or the configuration change to the software there's always the risk that something will go wrong inadvertently and you don't want that to happen on Friday night because generally what will happen is you'll have a very limited pool of people on call. And if you have to start kind of, you know, mobilizing your entire development force, you know, on a Friday night or Saturday morning, it's difficult to do. People work on the weekend. It'll throw off the following week. So typically in the release cycle, Tuesdays are ideal. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, mm -hmm. the, to give you time. And, and just, you know, uh, one of the questions or comments last night was, well, it's just, you know, changing values, just a configuration change. Why would that be risky? And it's like the way that, that software works, it's super siloed and modularized. People have specializations and weird things happen all the time. Like one of the things that in Wild we noted was one time they released a patch and the spreading played speed up animation. It was slow again. Well, how did mm -hmm. that happen? In aberration, they probably pulled in a module that was older, or they had to merge some code, like all kinds of things happen. So generally speaking, it is bad to make any kind of a change when, you know, right before a holiday, a weekend, before a bunch of people are going to go on vacation. And so it just struck me as odd that they did it on a Friday, particularly because, you know, for all of Blizzard's flaws, I've never worked there, so I don't know if this is true they generally at least project the perception that they value work-life balance. Like Ixar mm -hmm. is very public of I'm going on vacation and I'm on vacation. I'm not on, you know, we joke where I work PTO, pretend time off, you know, like <laughs> I am truly on vacation. Right. So, so, you know, they, they, they tend to project work-life balance. And I, I think that enough people confirm that that's genuinely the case. Um, and so, that's this is antithetical to that because of all the risks associated with it. And, you know, I, I've speculated for a while now that a lot of their action the actions they take, whether it's balanced choices or timing of things, oftentimes is influenced a little bit by the Twitter and Reddit, you know, echo chamber. But at the same time, you know, you kind of get it because it's the most engaged and, and invested audience and you want to try and keep them happy. But like it, it struck me as odd. Um, but you know, if, if it was the plan the whole time, then cool, but it's, there's really no way it was because we saw Nick and Alkali like going back and forth on, on like, you know, when, when is this coming out? You know? And she's like, well, I don't want to contradict Nick. And so my options are, I could delete the tweet and I don't want to do that. Or Nick could respond and say like, well, actually, or, you know, I could just post a meme and we can move on. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> deleting the tweet would have been bad it would have kind of you didn't get yeah. the conspiracy theorists so you know i mean this was yeah. gen like honestly i thought they handled it really well because in they large did. companies even amongst people that are friendly with one another miscommunications changing priorities and in, in 
and, and directional mm -hmm. shifts can happen. And clearly there wasn't alignment in the team in terms of the release date. And they were probably having a debate internally of, well, what's the lesser of two evils? Taking the risk and pushing it out early and hopefully making people happy or being risk adverse and, and stoking already a very lively um, and antagonistic base of, of users. And like, I don't... I, I've, I wouldn't want to be in their position. I've been in the position before, obviously not for game development, but where I work, where we had to like weigh similar things. Like, do mm -hmm. we do we take a risky action that could blow up in our face to please a customer, or do we tell the customer what they don't want to hear and rationalize that it's for their own good, even though they'll irrationally be upset about it, at least in the short term? These are very common decisions. Uh, decision points that are made in you know any industry, gaming, um, otherwise, etc. Because the fundamentals are similar, so I, I really think it's fascinating just from like a uh, just you know an industry observer that 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 this you know the notes, the decision, the notes, and the release yeah. all happen in quick succession. Whether you realize it or not, or appreciate it or not, they took a pretty big gamble. So mm -hmm. far, I haven't played Hearthstone today at all, but. I haven't heard anyone complain that there have been any issues with the patch. I Although there's always, either, but it seems stable. Seems um, stable. So knock wood for their sakes, because uh, working over the weekend with a skeleton crew sucks. Well, yeah, I, I have I have three things to kind of yes and that one. Um, if it was as e easy as changing uh, variables, uh, you know, changing values to to push those, uh, you know, nerfs or unnerfs through. It would just be a server side patch. Like we we wouldn't have to like have this you know big rollout. So but so even for, configuration changes can be dangerous server side. Right. But but yes. Right. But, but yeah. Not it, contradict that, what that, you're saying. But uh, yeah. exactly what I'm saying. If it was that yeah. easy, a it would just be server side, and b it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a big deal. But there is so much more to it than that. So fundamentally, so much yeah. more to it than that. Um, two, uh, this is a video game, right? Like. Oh, oh no! You went there. You went there to no, this. No, oh no no no, no no this no, is no, important no, no! no 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 stuff. No 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 no. Even better than that. This is a video game, right? When do people <laughs> play the most video games? Oh yes, yeah. Over the weekend. Yeah. Well. Pushing a patch out on a Friday when it's kind of like a question mark on the stability, a question mark on you know how it's going to be uh, interpreted, how it's going to like the, how it's going to feel. That's a really big risk. That's a huge risk. So the fact that it was on Friday, the same day as the patch notes, I think that that's even more to the point of the, I, I don't think that that was kind of how it was intended um, because, because it's a video game and because the vast majority of players play over the weekend. I mean, that that's when, that's when people get, get their time in. Um, yeah. You know, whenever they, they have <clears throat> nine to five jobs, if they're in school, you know, like, so many things. The weekend is just when people get their playtime in. Not not everyone, yeah. but but that's when their their numbers statistically go up. My third point. This is the big one. I'm on the edge yes. of my seat. <laughs> the exclamation mark is still on the journal, and if they were to have pushed it through with prop with enough time and enough lead in time, there's no way that would have still been there because that is one of the. A, you, you see it all, like every time you log in, people have talked about it since it's happened. It's been something that's been annoying me personally. Yeah. So, so th there's no way that would have still been there if they'd been able to push out the patch in the way that they wanted to. Just to put an exclamation mark on my points. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I know this is a Hearthstone podcast, not a not a corporate career um, advice podcast, but I'm I'm going to I'm going to give your viewers a little bit of free advice from a grizzled 20 year industry veteran. <laughs> I tell this to my team all the time. Andrew, they say that this is going to be quick and easy, so we should just go along with it. Nothing. Nothing in this <laughs> no. life is quick or easy. Fixing the exclamation mark in the quest journal. That should be quick or easy. No, nothing no. is ever quick or easy. And if someone comes to you and says, hey, let's do activity X because it will be quick and easy and we'll get results Y, turn around and run away. Mm -hmm. Run away 
as fast as you can because those are the people that will cause problems and, and a structural breakdown because the thing about taking risks is that sometimes they, they pay off. Maybe it will be quick and easy, but a lot of times it'll blow up in your face. Yeah. How many times have you guys had that 1%, you know, like loss rate in battlegrounds and you get knocked out eighth place? It, it stuff happens. Yeah. Quick and easy. Nothing's quick or easy, especially in a collaborative environment. Oh boy, the, the, tri the, the PM triangle, a classic, but it, you know, it's a classic for a reason, but, but nothing is ever fast or easy. There's always that risk. And, 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 you know, she that's the, your third point. I know you were kind of joking, but I actually didn't think about it. Right. They didn't rush this patch out. They absolutely would have taken care of that. Now I'm before I was kind of like, maybe, maybe they, 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 they were delayed and, and, and they intended to release it earlier this week. Now I'm convinced that they, they pulled it in based, based on, that. I didn't even think of that. So, so good. I, um, so I, I think uh, Nate, you're, you're, I will never know for sure, but I, I, my money's on, they, they were going to do it next week and they made a, they made a gut check. They did a mod check and they're like, mm -hmm. they pushed it into production early. Yeah. Yeah. Really I was, cool. I was, really interesting. So relieved to not have to check that journal every single time. And whenever that was still there, I was like, oh yeah, they, they, they didn't have enough lead in time. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. Our hearts go out to you, Hearthstone team. Congratulations so. on a risky Friday release that largely <laughs> has been okay. Yes. Fingers crossed, but who knows what will happen, right? You know what I mean? yeah that this continues i want to i want to show you something though i don't know if you guys can see i'll put it in the discord chat so you can see it better but this is there's a design philosophy that is right right along that those same lines where uh let me, let me just share it with you guys so you can see but it, it's <laughs> but, true like this is 100 percent true you can't you can't have fast uh and cheap you know or mm -hmm. fast and good like they don't work together um I mean, the the concept is, yeah, fast plus cheap, not good. Uh, fast plus good is not cheap. But I, um, but I, even I believe that this is like so. We're in the upper left where it says good fast, not cheap. Mm -hmm. I would argue that good fast. There's no good fast. There's not. The, no, like there's, it doesn't. You just, can't like. There are leaders who think they can throw money at a problem, and 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 one of my first managers, you know. Mm -hmm. He's, he was a boomer and this expression will kind of reveal his boomerism because I'm not sure it's as politically correct. But like the expression is nine women can't have a baby in a month, no matter how much you pay them. It's just not biologically possible. And That's like true. good and fast. Yeah, it's not going to be cheap, but it's just not possible. Like in most situations, unless you plan for it in advance. But if you're having this type of conversation, like if you're in a position where you have to pull out the the decision triangle, the PM triangle, whatever you want to call it, you didn't plan for the event that you're trying to mitigate. <laughs> and so, so like the ship's already flown, uh, the ship's already left port, the horse has already mm -hmm. left the barn. But I'm I'm now ranting and raving, so I'll, I'll stop. Uh, my apologies if that analogy was a bit crude, but uh, it, it's what my old boss said. You know, there's still boomers in this world, and I, I think that uh, even though there might be a better way to put it, it, it certainly kind of illustrates a, a fundamental truth. Yeah. yeah, there there are some things that no matter how many people or no no matter how much money you throw at a problem, it's not going to go any faster, or or necessarily be any better. Um, so uh, that's a while the uh, metaphor may be a, a little antiquated, the the rationale is still apt. Looking at the one you just posted. Oh, on yeah, this one's even a little bit more accurate. I mean, here's the thing: like you do something, <laughs> trash go away. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there this one go. this one adds the the free thing. So, I mean, it's different. Like as a designer, when we would, I used to do a lot more freelance than I do these days. It's kind of a side gig, but like it people uh like you, if you get offered a project that you don't want to do you've got two choices you either turn it down or you quote like an exorbitant dollar amount for it that makes up for the time that you don't want to be working on it and like mm -hmm. and then if they go for it then fine at least i'm you know making some money uh but what people want always is is like fast and cheap or, or free and fast and it's like get out of here and now <laughs> i will say that depending on how much experience you have like okay i've been using photoshop for 15 years like i can photoshop very quickly uh i won't say it's it's still it's stressful you know and 
you, you know, you skimp on the quality the faster that you go. It's doable. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, it's also, I think this one says it here, you get what you pay for. You Like this, it, this uh, where fast and great coincide, you get what you pay for. Like, yeah, you want to give me a thousand dollars. I'll stop what I'm doing and do your thing right now. But like, otherwise it, it's not happening. And uh, going down a big rabbit hole here. But anyways, I, I'm shocked that, that it, this they pushed this patch out and it's stable. Like, I don't know. Twitter bullies, man. The bullies on Twitter. What I don't want, what, and, and I almost, I kind of wish that they wouldn't for the good of the order because I worry that they set some kind of precedence that like, all right, now we're just going to like, they're just going to do what people want now? I don't I don't buy that because like it I mean yes that would be a concern but like you're you're talking about an audience that have expectations that are 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 well beyond like it doesn't matter if they set or don't set a precedent like they're 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 always <laughs> going to demand more more yeah. faster you know better all the 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 literals you have on the screen like I don't I don't really think faster that, better stronger I mean, look Whatever at look. Everyone was demanding is. it. Yeah, like everyone All was demanding it. Yeah, I I think that that setting expectations with this with the audience as like a, a you know a holistic group as a group think is is never gonna happen. So well, you know, you throw a wrench in it even more, right? They're they're all working remote still. At least that's my understanding. And so not only you've got these community managers trying to sort out like who's doing what and the notes and what is it going to say and then left hand kind of doesn't know what the right hand's doing because they're not in the same office when they normally would be right like if i was going to push this out we have a team meeting okay we're talking about hey here's the the nerfs that are going to go through and a couple of buffs and who's going to do what and communicate what and then like so it's easier when we're all in the same room and we can delegate tasks and all know who's doing what and like i think that there's some of that missing a little bit I mean, Nate, that's very unmillennial and Zoomer like thinking coming from you right now. Well, um, I, I, we do some, some stuff remotely and some stuff in person and, and I'm all for, I'm all for remote work. I'm, I don't have any, any qualms with that. I will say it works better for some industries than others, but, uh, I just, it was funny to me because there was clearly some, some misaligned communication happening. So. To segue to the nerfs themselves, I, I so zombies goes nom nom wrote in the chat. I think Theo would have been hit if they really caved to pressure like that. So I think this is a good kind of pivot back to a relevant topic: what they nerf. Mm-hmm. So this is what they didn't nerf. They didn't nerf Theotar, and I actually think that the reason they didn't nerf Theotar is because had they had nerfed, so Theotar is gross. I am not a fan. It's just my opinion. I don't like what it does. I don't like its play pattern, even though I'm generally not affected by it. If they would have nerfed Theotar, they would have started to unravel the tapestry that makes up the metagame. Once again, you looked in the notes, they talked about Mm -hmm. high confidence changes. For those listening in audio, I'm making hand quotes. (laughs) Changing Theotar would have consequences that I don't think most people could predict and project much like the changes that precipitated the meta we had since mm-hmm. the initial balance patch. So I, I think that Theotar is something they're still looking at closely, but they're going to need to really understand what they're going to be unleashing onto the metagame um, if they do hit it. And, and that's true for Standard. I also believe it's true for Wild. Yeah. Um, you know, Theotar is gross, but look at the types of decks it punishes and holds back with Decks like Pillager Rogue, those are gross too. Um, and and so I, I I think the reason they didn't they didn't touch the Atar was because even though they it's not because they wouldn't cave to pressure, although it possibly could be, it's because they didn't want to repeat what happened last time where they had unintended consequences. I think that when they talk about high confidence changes, they're confident that these changes, while maybe not enough to get it to where it needs to be, will put the metagame in a direction that will be more uh, agreeable to a plurality of players. So yeah. Theotar is the hero that we never knew <laughs> existed. And I'll just, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, necessary I'll, evil. I'll read this, right? So Aleko says, um, getting a lot of questions about Theotar, happy to add a bit of context as to why we didn't change him 
this patch. We definitely talked about him, but decided against changes for a few reasons. The biggest reason is that our focus this patch was on high confidence changes. We weren't high confidence in what the meta would look like if we changed the EO, especially with all the other changes we were doing. We really wanted this patch to improve things and weren't looking to take big risks. So we decided it was better to wait and see how things land. We're also hitting a number of cards this patch, Guff, Don, Grasp, Kale, Brand, Denathrius combo that Theo is being played to counter. There's a chance he goes down in win rate slash play rate naturally. If he doesn't, he'll definitely be a card we discuss again next patch window. Uh, honestly, I was surprised that like Theo, I don't know, is really that much of a problem. And I agree with Aleko here that really like that's what Theo was being played to counter was primarily like this Denathrius OTK in standard. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of surprised that they didn't just hit Denathrius. Like, I know it's it's like the figurehead card of the set alongside uh, Renathal. They kind but... of did indirectly, and then yeah, and, and, and except for can... Druid that doesn't like the like the Druid deck. Well, they indirectly indirectly hit it for Druid, right? Because they hit the yeah. ramp that hits the mana cheat card that hit. Like, I it's a little bit of a mouse trap. For the, the boomers yeah. in the chat, you know that old board game mouse trap. <laughs> ah, a little bit of a fun. mouse trap solution, but like I mean, I, I I think that it will slow those decks down a little bit. Although you know, I Fingers mean, it's crossed. interesting because Druid like cut Kelthus from the deck. That being said, this old Guff got a, a little nerf. It's not a big nerf. Let's talk about the nerfs. Uh, I'll just let's, yeah, let's talk about the nerfs. Let's let's, let's yeah. pull them up here. The and and we can just go I'm talking them around because... them for a while so let's tackle them head on <laughs> all right so head here on. i've just got the screen up here that shows the patch notes so uh the the first first and foremost we have guff so the old battle cry um and hero power granted full mana crystals and so it says now uh, new battle cry and hero power grant empty mana crystals so uh, it's a set your uh, set your maximum mana to twenty. Gain an empty mana crystal. Draw a card. Hero power. Choose one. Draw a card or gain an empty mana crystal. So you're no longer. Here's the dev comment. Ramp Druid is one of the most powerful and influential decks in the game. This patch Guff was the clear power outlier for the deck. So a change to Guff was the highest confidence change we could make. We still expect Guff to be a playable card with an important role in these strategies, but we hope that this change will make it feel. Like there is more of a cost to ramping than there was previously. Okay, okay. I um I don't know. Guff is still great. They didn't change the mana cost. I, it slows it down. That's for sure. It does slow it down. Guff yeah. will still see play in every deck it saw play in because it's yep. still broken. I agree. It still does two of the best things in the game: ramp your mana and draw you cards. But this does this does tame it some. Um. And it will allow for less, like, like in wild, oftentimes what people would do is they would, like, ramp and then do something. Like, ramp and play Scale of Anixia, which I was a little surprised didn't get hit. Ramp and play Blue Flipper Friends. And so now you can't do that anymore. So you're taking one action out of that equation, and that will mm -hmm. have an effect. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to say how much of an effect, but I do think it will... I, I mean, strictly speaking, it is worse now than it was before, and there will be breakpoints where it's relevant. I just, yeah, they you you could just tell by this nerf that they really didn't want to nerf them. They didn't increase the mana cost, and they didn't change the maximum number of mana crystals, which a lot of people wanted to see reduced. So it's still it's still gonna it's still gonna matter. It's still gonna be relevant, but it's not enough to see the card's play rate decrease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. In wild, for sure, and probably standard, too. Yeah. Uh, agreed on all counts. Um, I, I feel like this is consistent with their recent uh, design philosophy when it comes to nerfs. Um, you know, we're not worse on commandering things anymore, right? I'm glad uh, this about is a that, nudge. though. I agree. I completely agree. Mm, and th this is a nudge. feels like a better... Yeah, it's an... Yeah. Well, this is... Th this is a well, lighter well nudge said, than we anticipated, yeah, right? Nudge is, is a good descriptor, yeah. Yeah. Um. And and I think that this is probably where Guff should have been to begin with. Agreed. Uh, still very powerful. You know, the all of the effects that Guff has are still very powerful, but it reduces the elasticity of both when you play Guff and whenever you gain a mana crystal with his hero power, right? Like restricting that elasticity and making it to where 
you you do have to consider the mana that you're using. And whenever you're ramping, you're ramping for the next turn. I, I mean, I, I just think it's it's a good nudge. It'll still be, like you said, the play rate, I don't think will drop whatsoever. Um, if it drops, it's only because the rest of the meta has shifted in, in reaction to the rest of these nudges. Um, so completely agreed. It's it's a it's a light nudge. Uh, it it does make it worse than it was before, but it it's still a, a crazy broken card. Oh gosh, yeah. I don't. I mean, Guff could have been eight mana this whole time, and everyone would still would have played it, right? I mean, it doesn't. The card's nutty. I I it'll still see play. I, Blue Train said it correctly, right? It'll still see play in all the decks that it currently sees play in. I'm confident Including in my Renathal um, <laughs> Aggro Druid. You run Guff just for draw, by the way. The hero power is always draw. That's hilarious. That deck is terrible, and it's so much fun. Uh, so, Ed- <laughs> that's really funny. Um, Edwin, uh, yeah, if you've got 11x, you can hit Legend with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Edwin got reverted uh, back to four again, to nobody's surprise. Here's the comment. There's been a lot of attention on Edwin ever since he was buffed in the last patch, and rightfully so. Since his buff, he's been one of the most highly played and winningest cards in the game, which made him an obvious candidate for a high-confidence adjustment to Rogue. When we made the initial buff, Rogue looked like it needed some help, but now that these lists have been more refined, we think Rogue will remain a player in the meta, even with Edwin back at four. All right. Yeah, I mean... Can you imagine if they didn't revert this card? No, the card was crazy. And, but, but imagine they didn't revert it. Well, then the people would scream about it. I, I mean, gosh, oh, we were even playing this in people in... screaming about things <laughs> in my Hearthstone. Oh gosh, of course. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this was good enough to see play in Wild recently, right? With the uh, that Renathal Kingsbane we saw going around, like this was a that, fun card. That that means that Renathal Kingsbane is a viable deck to to be played, but um, <laughs> well. Uh, People were having success with it, believe Green it or not. Green Puff but... could have success with uh, an autocomplete deck. So yeah, but you know what? Know. Craig Craig hit Legend with it, so there's that after not playing for a year. So, I, you know. I mean... What are you saying? Craig's not good at the game? Is, is that is, is this what I'm hearing, Nate? Uh, we have you on the record? Is, uh... Objection. <laughs> States facts, not in evidence. Move on. <laughs> Overruled. The big question I have with this is the deck that it was principally pushing <laughs> forward was that Miracle Rogue list that Corbett recently hit rank one with, but also mm-hmm. a lot of other players hit rank one with it. And will the cards still see play in that deck? And will that deck still be good? It's potential that that was like another tier, like high tier wild deck that was kind of just starting to emerge. I tried I it. That- it was pretty fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty fun. The mana cost sucks, though. I don't know. The deck is probably still going to be good. Will Edwin still be a part of it? I don't know. But perhaps kind of nipping that in the bud might have not been the worst thing in the world. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I imagine we'll try it. Like, right? I remember when Smite got nerfed and we were having the same discussion and it was like, well, will it still see play? Like, probably. Like, what would take its place? I don't know. Like, we'll go test it and see if it still makes the cut or not. And I, I imagine that will probably happen. Cool. And it just or, turned or, out or... that uh, Smite was buffed because then you could play it in Odd Rogue. <laughs> you hear that triple lift? Odd Rogue is back. I love your Although optimism. You just lost, you I, just I did lost hit Edwin Legend again. with Odd Rogue <laughs> whenever, <laughs> whenever Smite was nerfed, so... <laughs> that is true. Uh, all right, another, let me... another person who could probably put an auto complete and take it to whatever rank they so choose. <laughs> yes. Oh shucks. Uh, okay, let me move on. Uh, Don Grasp, Magister Don Grasp. Uh, their hero power got hit. So prior it was deal two damage, honorable kill, gain plus two damage, and now it is deal two damage, honorable kill, gain plus one mm-hmm. damage. So they touched it. Again, they're not taking the Warsong Commander approach anymore. Um, yeah. Meaning, like, it's still playable. It's just not as, like, gnarly good as it was. And I think that this also doesn't, like, destroy the card. Uh, it's still very playable. Yeah, it's completely just... agreed. Um, one of the places that, well, Varden Dongrasp was seeing play in any and all mage 
decks in standard period why not Um, (laughs) i mean well especially really good (laughs) one of the the biggest ones um that is kind of a the the exclamation point on on the journal of varden needing a, a, a little nudge is big spell mage right Big Spell Mage was not running Wildfire, was not running any other um, hero power support except for Mordresh, which was really just a payoff from Varden than anything else, right? Um, and people playing Big Spell Mage were able to honorably kill, honorably kill, and then all of a sudden they're pyroblasting with their, their hero power on the reg, right? Like this was not an outlier. I mean, you know, it, it would probably happen in about... If you're going late, I'd, I'd say about a quarter of the games. But again, a quarter of the games going late and you're drawing this and, and, and mm-hmm. is pretty consistent, right? Um, so Barton changing... Have a higher win rate than Goth? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I would need to look at the stats for that. Um, I don't think so. But I think that's more because um, Druid had more successful archetypes than mage in general but varden dawn grasp was being played in a deck like big spell mage which didn't have any support for the card right like it, it's not like you were playing a hero power mage right it's not like you were running wildfire it's not like you were doing any of that it was just like the one card that could win you the game there, um there's a lot of which i, I think is the the why it got this nudge. And I think it's a good nudge. I, I think it's fair. It makes the card still playable because there's a lot of multi-function synergy where, you know, it's replaying stuff. And even if it's, I mean, we see it in wild, it replays an ice block. Uh, and I mm-hmm. think the initial intended use maybe was, hey, hero power mage, ping mage, or whatever you want to call yeah. it. And that was my favorite, but I played a lot of big spell mage and, and then I hit standard legend last month, which that like skeleton mage and there's still synergy there. We're still running wildfire and then all yeah. the skeleton cards are all frost spells and like, huh? I think, I don't think it goes away. No, I don't think it does either. It, it just rains in the playing it in decks with no support yeah. and then it being the one card win condition in decks that it's not, you know being played with additional support yeah speaking of uh skeleton mage not that it was seeing any play in wild maybe it will one day i think somebody tried it and was that you sheep i don't remember somebody tried it and said it wasn't very good but uh they hit the night cloak sanctum no no surprise at all so uh they just changed the durability which makes sense because uh it's really good so it it previously this is the mage location it says uh freeze a minion summon a 2-2 volatile skeleton they reduce the durability from three down to two. Here's the dev comment. It says, along with Druid and Rogue, Mage has been one of the most dominant classes since the last patch. Nightcloak Sanctum has been a clear outlier in the mid stages of the game, and the scaling threat of Magister Dawngrasp's hero power has been the dominant in the end game. These two standout cards were the most obvious targets for tuning down the deck's power level and should also make the class feel less frustrating to play against in the mid and late game. Okay. It still feels fair to me. Not quite as as busted, but uh I don't know. not not it's surprising. Frustra- we all saw this coming, yeah. right? Yeah. It's frustrating to play against cuz it, it it's like the the whole like 2 and 1, right? You freeze and get a decent minion and doing that 3 times over the course of a game is really strong and 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 really feels bad and and mage had the tools to get those 3 uses, right? Cuz it's not a not an aggressive deck in the traditional sense. So mm-hmm. again, this will see play in every mage deck. Well, in standard, it's still a good card, right? Yeah. Completely agreed. Um I I want to say that in the reveal this was how uh night cloak sanctum was revealed and then whenever we we got to play around with it they had buffed it to three durability um so they knew yeah it's, it's like they played around with it and decided to nudge it down or nudge it up nudge it in a, in a better way and and this way they're like oh we were right we probably should have released it at, at two durability all along <laughs> and like you said it's still a, a powerful effect still freezing it's still getting you a skellington which you were then able to 
have for board control and for, you know, the skeleton synergies with Kelthos and for the death rattle and, and, and like, it's still a good card, but three, three uses was, was a little much. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I think it was Zacco who predicted, we were talking about this last night. Um, the, the next nerf here is the hunter quest defend the dwarven districts. So they are nerfing the first stage of the hunter quest line. So previously it said old deal two dam or deal damage with two spells and they increased it to three. So now it's deal damage with three spells to progress the quest line. And it's exactly the same rationale as we were chatting about. The dev comment says Quest Hunter is a frustrating deck to play against and was poised to be a powerful meta contender after the changes to the other classes. This changes both to address the deck's current state and anticipated relative power level after this patch. Which is kind of, I mean, gosh, we, I, I think Blue and, and Zombies and myself had this conversation last night, right? Well, where I think, right? Or was it with NHL earlier? I don't remember, but we were talking about this. And it's like, if if these other classes go down, then what's left? Oh, Quest Hunter is like then uncharacteristically strong. Like where the deck is already good, this makes it even better. We knew quest lines have been strong. And this is very slowly getting the raid the docks treatment. I yep. can't, I cannot believe at at one point, like when this first came out, unregulated, like unnerved, it was busted, and we all went hog wild with it for several months there. Yeah, buddy, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I are you mean, talking about raid the docks or or, or defend the dwarven district or both, both? <laughs> i mean both yes, really I, but yeah can i can i confess something i really want them to nerf raid the docks and it rotates i really want them to. i do I don't, too i do too I don't, because I don't it's it, i don't think it will happen it, it probably shouldn't but i mean but it's my like... renathal pirate warrior is actually kind of decent unlike my renathal aggro druid interesting they nerfed it to the point that it's unplayable is the problem like it i i like okay raid the dogs got nerfed what two three times and i twice okay i mean i feel like the first nerf mm -hmm. was enough and mm -hmm. the second nerf like just nuked the class in wild and standard for that matter like nobody plays it anymore it defend the dwarven oh sorry Nate, go ahead. no it's fine i just it i wouldn't I don't want them to revert it back to what it was at launch, but reverting it to that, like f after the first nerf would be fine with me. All right. What is your thought on yeah, Dwarven districts though? I, I don't know about standard, but in wild people were still playing it. I thought it was real bad. Mm -hmm. This is just going to make it even worse it's in wild. Oh, and it's the, unplayable the, the, in wild The break point. Yeah. Like you, you will really struggle to get Tavish out early, even as a high roll now. Um, yeah, and maybe maybe that's okay. Well, I mean, uh, but I like Sh Shutterwalk Shaman is gone now, so I guess there's that. But I, I don't know. Yeah, I this feels like a little much for me, at least in Wild. I guess yeah, we have um, Copper Hunter, so there's that. Yeah. The honorable from, hunter deck. <laughs> <laughs> from from the the standard perspective, um, I feel like they're they're kind of nerfing, particularly with the next card we'll we'll discuss. Uh, some of the more kind of late game um, burst potential for uh, s some of those those kinds of uh, combo style decks, and so this kind of keeps defend the Dwarven District from just being the control deck against any aggro that that may be um rising up i, I played a, a fair amount of uh, aggro druid um at lunch uh today um in standard and it, it was really good um if defend the dwarven district was untouched the, i mean it would just completely control the board and do what it did in wild whenever defend the dwarven district was kind of out of control right so um I understand why they did it from a standard perspective. I feel like I at least wasn't seeing a ton of, of uh, quest line hunter and wild as it was. And with this nerf, I don't think I'm going to see any more of it until like there are some nerf reversions or kind of additional 
for um, damage spells to make it really super duper duper consistent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, when they, when, what was it? Uh, Storm, Stormwind, whatever came out, like the quests changed the entire game. It just permanently changed the, the scope of, of the entire game. And so mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that these cards keep getting reworked. Mm-hmm. But I, it's kind of sad to me when they get hit to the point of like unplayability. I just it's just too slow now to, to really match up with like Quest Mage or uh, some of these other decks. Huh? Anyways, I, I, uh, I will say at lunch, I did run into a defend the Dwarven district hunter and they did beat me as the aggro druid because the hero power strong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it just depends. You know, it depends. And I, I guess sometimes we, we get caught up in this hyper competitive, like 11 X pocket where some of the funner decks don't see as much play. And maybe I forget about that sometimes, but I, I don't know. I, I would like it to be mm, like viable without being broken. And I think that this just makes it it's just too slow. I, I, I'm okay with it in standard, but it's not going to see any play in wild. I don't think in my hope, like I'd be okay with them reverting it when it rotates. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know. All right, let's do So here's, let's talk about the next one, which is Kel Kelthus sin strider. Nobody really, I, I think is probably surprised about this. Um, they, they war song commander this though. And I'll tell you exactly why. So, so it was a mm-hmm. uh, six mana increase to eight mana. Kelthas Sinstrider says every third minion you play each turn costs zero. Big and, change. and so huge, w- what was happening is every single class in standard was running Sire Denathrius, Kelthas Sinstrider and Bran. And, and so you just brand Kelthas Denathrius and hit for like a hundred or 40 or 30 or whatever and every class could do it because it's a neutral combo and it was getting super old and now you can uh only do it in druid (laughs) (laughs) and you don't need kelthus anymore so by by making it eight mana you can't play it with bran really is is well or or i should say you can't play it with bran and anathrius in the same turn anymore unless you're druid because uh you don't have enough mana. So here's the dev comment. Kelthus, Bran, and Denathrius have appeared together as a package in a variety of decks. To address the specific interaction between these three cards, we felt the best solution was to add two more to the cost of the Bran Kelthus combo so that they can't be played with 10 mana. We preferred to change Kelthus over Bran because Kelthus is being used primarily for things like this combo, while Bran has other interesting use cases too. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, and I agree with that. Like, I Bran has been Bran for ages and has never really felt busted. I think when when we saw Kelthus first unveiled, like everyone knew it was going to be a problem. Like we've been saying that since day one. So. Mm-hmm. Funny, it was a problem in standard more so than wild, but yeah. Yeah, I don't think it really has been a problem in wild because we have better cards than this. But like, didn't they learn anything from the last (laughs) Kelthas? Live and don't learn. It's our motto, right? (laughs) We used to, yeah, we used to have a saying that it was, uh, "If it makes sense, don't do it." And uh, (laughs) and no. (laughs) <laughs> no 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 <laughs> um i don't think they'll hit bran bran is iconic bran has been in the game for years and has not been broken bran enables and i agree with their sentiment here where bran enables combos that are not game breaking where kalthas was enabling every single class to do a wonky otk combo that uh yeah I like your meme blue yeah. train. I'll put it up on the screen. I got real tired of losing to Renathal, uh, or excuse me, Denathrius OTKs. It's getting super old. Well, and I, I feel like it's not that Bran is kind of baked into powerful battle cries. It's that powerful battle cries are already like fairly costed, right? And so things that have super powerful effects like Denathrius are costed appropriately. And things like Kel'thas that en- enable you to cheat out Bran in the same turn that you you cheat out or that you play Denathrius um, just kind of 
hey, here's your super powerful 10 manas worth of, of an effect twice. If you're somehow engineering a brand to stick on the board through some sort of tomfoolery or like conceal or, 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 okay, you worked for it, right? But Brand Kelthos was just like, here you go, have a second battle cry that should cost 10 mana. And I mean, that's, that wasn't intended. I mean, it may have been intended, but not to be as ubiquitous as it ended up being, which is why we see Kelthos getting the hit there instead of Bran, right? Um, yeah. Because you, <laughs> you, <laughs> with the exception of Druid, you don't have 13 mana. Um, and that can be countered with now, uh, you know, the Theotar either hitting Bran or, you know, Daddy D. So, <laughs> I, um, yeah. It's uh so there's a comment in chat about um Bran should just be Hall of Famed. Why nerf a staple wild card for standard when it's not been broken in wild? I mean, it was Hall of Famed and they pulled all of the League of Explorers back. What's really been interesting is that a lot of the uh League of Explorers had um synergy for like singleton decks or like Reno decks, no duplicate decks, whatever you want to call it. And they haven't released any no duplicate synergy cards. Which kind of makes me curious. Like, why why would they bring him back? I mean, maybe it was for the Mercenaries crossover. I don't really know. It's yeah, kind of been interesting because so, like a third set, Nate. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I know. And may, I mean, you know, I'm curious. Do they? Is there some support there? Because otherwise, why did they do it? I don't know. They think like Singleton so, Reno Renathal decks in standard. Like, but nobody plays them. So. I think it's mostly just because the League of Explorers are so kind of like iconic yeah. Hearthstone that it's it's just for that. And the original League of Explorers, only really Reno had the singleton um, kind of synergy, right? Um, because the Elise is only really the um, saviors of Old Doom. Same with, um, well, Bran, Reno Part 2, and um, Sir Finley. Uh, those were all... Um, singleton i get confused because with saviors but not not with league of explorers yeah you're right i i get confused because we play wild and everything is everything is good and then i play some mercs and and the uh, league of explorers are pretty good in mercs right now and nice. uh and so then it's confusing right like oh which elise is it because i was playing something the other day i think it was an otz deck that was running it was like a reno dragon druid and it was running elise and yeah. uh it's that's really it super fun. fun but i was confused it's is it the golden monkey one that's in standard yeah it is okay that makes yeah. sense all right whatever so so you 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 had corrected me the only uh singleton card really then is reno jackson mm -hmm. yeah i i do find it well a, a little curious that we did see the league of explorers go in for pretty much any reason except for quintessential hearthstone um, they didn't want to make, you know, another version of the League of Explorers. So they just brought those back in uh, since they've already done two rounds of, of all of them. Um, another one already. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, the only one that's really seeing play is Bran. In Wild, we really only see two of them played from from the League of Explorers, um, which is, of course, Bran and Reno and and Reno is not nearly as ubiquitous as Bran. So that kind of tracks with standard as well. Yep. Uh, okay. Let me, um, pull up the patch notes again here. Oh, we can just keep your meme on the screen. Cause it, it doesn't even, uh, it doesn't even cover the patch notes. It's great. All right. All right. So, uh, the next one, which is really kind of interesting here is the smothering starfish. <laughs> right. yeah mm -hmm. i don't understand i don't get this this one was a little bit of a surprise to me so it previously cost three now it cost four this is the one it's a it says beast on it it's not a beast is it yeah is it well it's a starfish oh yeah. all right i never i never noticed that before anyways uh this is one that says battle cry silence all other minions so here's the dev comment smothering starfish was living up to its name a bit too much the goal for this <laughs> card was for it to be a strong tech card, but the cost to include it in your deck was low enough that it was acting more like a staple than a tech card. While responding to specific meta forces, Starfish was also unintentionally snuffing out a variety of underrepresented decks. We think this adjustment will still allow Starfish to be used as a powerful tech option, but will make it less generically ubiquitous. Wow, those are some big words. 
Um, hey, but, I said you baked my ass earlier tonight. You did. Someone <laughs> did well on their SATs. Uh, and so, I mean, but I agree having, so I've hit standard legends the past few months as well. And you see it everywhere. You see, we started to see aggro druid pop back up and this yeah. card would just destroy the, 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 the whole board, right? All the death yeah. rattles and all the buffs and stuff go away. Um, although I was a little bit surprised to see it in a lot of decks. It was running as like a one of, and mm-hmm. I, I, I yep. mean, whatever. Uh, I, I know that people, um, there are some swordfish rogue enjoyers who put this in their deck sometimes. So at three mana, that card was by far the lowest win rate card in swordfish rogue by like <laughs> a margin of 10%. So I mean, what do you like, think it will be at four? <laughs> well, so I think those people who are running it will continue to run it. So bad bad lists will still exist because people don't like to to be like people like to have outs right like you know you Mm -hmm. can win games with this against a big priest i do think that this is a wild relevant change because people are running showstopper and even lock Mm -hmm. and i mean showstopper was kind of good because it didn't have a battle cry because shamans were playing boom pistol bully and that was a way to get around it um i I think this just kind of naturally slots into even lock now i mean we used to play like way back in the day spellbreaker in even lock this is just way better than spellbreaker yeah i i will say yeah when i yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah when (laughs) have to have to play hydra since he's not here um when i hit legend a few months back with even lock it was running the showstopper combo and it was very handy, and I would just cackle anytime a <laughs> a shaman would freeze my whole board of of giant minions and be like, "Well, let me just play my my showstopper and and uh, unfreeze all my all my dudes." And this is a, I guess, maybe a better way of doing that now that it costs four. It's a more elastic way of doing it, right? It's well, it's- like showstopper, you had to was it a death rattle, right? So you had to use mm-hmm. like you had to kill it as well and so it required two cards exactly and now this I'm does sure that and mm-hmm. yeah and now this does the same thing with one card so yeah cool now i can fit, i can fit two additional cards in my deck now i think you'll see you'll see this more often uh it certainly makes even lock a better deck uh i mean think about uh it was already probably pretty favored into even shaman but it just helps even more uh beast hunter doesn't like it like any deck that you're trying to verse that isn't like a grindy deck won't like having starfish played against it so yeah I think it's, a, it's a natural include yeah yeah i think so uh okay with the exception of even shaman i, I think that we'll see the the play rate and win rate of smothering starfish go down but as soon as you run, uh, include even shaman, or sorry, even warlock. Wow, mm. the real words. <laughs> as soon as Glad you I'm actually include, <laughs> uh, as soon as you actually look at even warlock, the, the a the play rate there is is going to be the one that skyrockets the most, and then of course the win rate as well, like y'all were talking about. So huge win for even warlock, huge loss for any other deck that was playing this card. Um, <laughs> And I'm kind of a okay with it. <laughs> nah, yeah. If you thought that Showstopper was handy, you should see how many hands the Starfish has. <laughs> five, five hands? Oh, yeah, it's more than two. <laughs> oh god, that's great. Um, okay, so the these cards are eligible for a full dust refund for two weeks, starting today, right? So the patch twenty four point two point two went out today. Today's Friday, mm-hmm. September the ninth. And so two two weeks from today would be uh, September the twenty third, yeah. So, anyways, there's two buffs that they snuck in here as well, which is kind of okay. Like, was not <laughs> expecting that, but right. So, school teacher was a uh, four three, and it has been increased to a four four. The dev comment says when we initially changed school teacher, it was the most played card in the game. We're partially reverting the balance change in order to make the card feel a bit better to include in decks, while still acknowledging that its power level at launch was a bit higher than we would have liked it to be. I don't even remember what it was. Was it a three mana four three? Four uh, mana five. Oh, five four. Five four. Okay. Yeah. And I'm glad you remember that. Anyway, so now it is a four mana four four. Okay. I I don't know that that really impacts us quite a bit. Yeah. But we didn't play it as a four mana five four in wild. 
No, um, I don't really think that we do now. No. Standard, no. I don't know. The reason I, I, I snap knew the uh, original stat line was because I enjoyed playing that Naga Mage deck. Um, yeah. But School Teacher was in every deck. So, I mean, it's better than it was. I, I honestly can't really intelligently evaluate this. Um, three to four is a pretty big break point mm -hmm. for a lot of cards. So I have to think it does make the card better. Although it's not as aggressively statted, so it doesn't quite lean in as much. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that the original nerf was good when it was made because we were talking about ubiquity earlier, right? Like school teacher was everywhere in standard. Um, yep. And it already has been cut down quite a bit uh, since Nagas aren't everywhere to begin with. So that, that synergy isn't something that people are looking for quite as much. And then, of course, th there are more powerful things to do. And, and it was... A four three, so maybe it sees a slight uptick in playability or play rate mm -hmm. in standard. Um, even at that, I don't think it'll be a huge uptick. It's just a, a perfectly fine card now. So I, I think this has, is a good nerf reversion. Yeah, zombies has a good point that the card pool in standard is smaller, and so yes. the spells that you discover with your Noggleings are a lot better than they would be in wild. Wild, you just get a bunch of random garbage. So I agree. Uh, okay, one. Also, hey, I like random also, garbage. Yeah, I think that there there is <laughs> that. Your, your win rate doesn't though. The cards just <laughs> my win rate doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just the effect is too slow for a while too, right? Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. The, the, yeah. the pool just is the nail in the coffin. The yes. The real question is, can anybody spell Zinashari? <laughs> uh, no. X. That's wrong. I guess. <laughs> okay. Wrong. I didn't even get the first letter right. Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Valiant effort, though, Blue. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> By Valiant, you mean fail. It's okay. And valiantly failed. <laughs> Speaking of fails, the next buff. Uh, yeah. yeah. So alliance. Or, or should we call it a nerf? You know. It can't Ooh. go in. E well, I don't even know. Hand buff is. It already is... could. So no one. All right. So I'm being a bit cheeky here. No one was playing Banana Man before the buff. No one will play Banana Man after the buff because nobody likes bananas as a banana is a tier D fruit. This is proven by science. So don't at me. Um, you can't draw them off Salad's Pride anymore, but like, were we running Banana Man and Salad's Pride in any wild deck recently anyways? I, I think this is just non-relevant for wild. For standard, maybe maybe there's something there. I, I don't know, but... Uh, uh, I'll have you know, I was playing a pure Paladin just last night that ran Banana Man, and it was terrible, but it was fun. Banana that that is man. the only counter I have. You're 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 completely wow. factually correct. <laughs> Practically. <laughs> okay, I mean, so... salads fried. You know, drawing off salads fried wasn't probably the worst draw off of it. Now you can't do that anymore. It's kind of a real sad. Hand buff Pally has been dead for a while. I. I queued a few times into Inmen last month, and I was bullying him so hard. He was trying to play. Uh, like if in men can't get it to work then it's just not uh, yeah it's just not, not gonna happen um uh i don't know if we mentioned it it was a 2-1 and they turned it into a 2-2 two -two. the dev the dev comment says when we buff cards in underperforming classes we rarely do it with the goal of immediately shooting the class to a 50 percent plus win rate our goal is to make the game more fun something we can accomplish by bringing the class up to a level where players feel like there is something worth exploring with the focus on high confidence changes in this patch the change we were most confident we could give paladin was something we've seen before a reversion to a previous balance change yeah i don't know it still feels awful to me and if you look at the um the stats on hs replay like paladin is down here at the bottom <laughs> uh and i'm surprised that it, it, demon hunter is even better than it it's just wow 45.6 percent uh, that's pretty bad. So, you know, I, but like, is the change to Bannerman going to fix that? I don't know. I don't think so. I, we, we were talking about like a, a feather nudge for <laughs> the uh, one we were talking about earlier for nerfs, um, for a uh, guff that this is a 
just the the whisper of of a, a nudge in the buff direction for for Bannerman, in in my opinion. Um, it no longer dies to hero power, but I'm not gonna play it, so it's not gonna live to hero power either. <laughs> like, right? No, these okay. are not like. It's. I don't think it. I mean, Mech Paladin is by far the highest win rate in standard, well above a pure Paladin or or hand buff. Uh, it looks like I haven't seen a whole lot of Paladin, and last time I did, I just beat them. So I, you know. I don't. If, the, if they really wanted to have an impact, they would have unnerfed Kirill. Yeah, that would have made a huge impact. <laughs> or Conviction. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's not even in standard anymore, but yeah. Oh, is it not? <laughs> I don't think oh. so. I uh, it Wasn't it part of Storm? Back. I thought it was from Stormwind. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I just haven't seen the, the ranked uh, spells in so long in standard. I <laughs> um, <laughs> messed it up. Yep. <laughs> it was... Uh, let me i'm playing it's from barons it's from barons yeah oh it's from barons so um they wouldn't have it in standard anyway yeah anyways yeah i i mean okay wait uh <laughs> barons is, is still there barons is still bad. standard yeah that, i don't know yeah, I, four set. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a little off tonight you know, slower than normal i i always <laughs> get them confused because we play so much wild that, and like everything is always available uh that that i often struggle with uh what's standard and what's not and oh my gosh when they when they added like the league of explorers and stuff to standard it melted my brain a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so barons is still in standard but it's it was the four set meta from the one right two years okay. ago so it's it's the oldest one that's still in standard yeah let's hope it they revert it when it rotates I don't oh, think I they will. So. I mean, with Crab Rider, I don't know. The don't Crab know. Rides again! <laughs> and Crab Crab Rider is like single-handedly saving the format. Well, I'm glad. And the format needs a hero, so... <laughs> the Atari and Crab Rider. <laughs> Odd couple. Oh, gosh. We need... Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we we need fan art of Crab Rider riding Theatar like like on its back like a piggyback ride. Oh yes, please. Could we do that? <laughs> That's funny. That would be hilarious. I'm googling. Let's see how much uh, time I have this weekend to do some Photoshop. <laughs> Could we oh, need to climb, Nate? I know, but like, I also want to ma ma make a picture of of the of the Crab Rider on Theotar. <laughs> Hmm. Can I do both? Hmm. Hmm. Unironically, I think you can. I don't think you're gonna find. I think you're gonna find climbing a hundred ranks pretty, pretty doable. I don't think session. it'll be. Yeah, I don't think it'll be too. Especially bad. if you rock, if you rock a deck like even Shaman that you're comfortable with. Like I did it with Odd Paladin, and like that was after they reverted Warhorse Trainer because I was curious, and like I was like, oh, Warhorse Trainer's broken. Odd Paladin's got to be broken. And I I climbed like a hundred and. 50 ranks and it was in the exact same position you were in. I had a really bad climb to legend mm -hmm. and I was like, odd paladins broken. And then it turned <laughs> out it was just really bad, but the games themselves were still pretty easy. I, I think like you'll have to invest the time, but I don't think it'll be quite as bad as maybe your theory. Oh no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's not like climbing from rank a thousand down to a hundred. I'm climbing from 200 down to a hundred. Like that's not that bad. With that month, I was at 2,000 on EU and clawed my way back to 100. Oh, gosh. That, that I never want I, to do again. <laughs> I've done it before. Talk about a grind. <laughs> we don't Guess talk. what deck I did it with? Raid the Docks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was last summer. Yeah. Let me see if I can make this bigger here. We don't we don't go through this stuff very often, but Sheep made this beautiful spreadsheet. And uh see if I can pull it up here. I'll make it a little bit Red bigger. Spreadsheet, you say? Uh, spreadsheet. spreadsheet yeah so this is like calculating or, or kind of tracking legend runs and uh and so there's two there's separate tabs here one for standard and one for wild um and i added some tabs to it sheep from from when i got it from you um, nice just to to put in what deck i played and wh where i got it from what date it was what rank i entered what my star bonus was and that sort of thing so i yeah. hit i hit standard legend five times uh three of them were with hunter uh, the other was with Druid and with Mage, but Wild over here has been, uh, I am now at, uh, I have to, 31, 31 times as a Wild Legend. Um, 
And uh yeah. What was what what were we talking about here? The um It's interesting going back and seeing these these lists and and when we hit with what uh Oh, the 11x bonus, right? So you can see down here when I lost it, right? So I got mm -hmm. uh the funny the here's the funny thing, right? The first time I got my 11x bonus, um was the month that I hit legend with Murloc Shaman <laughs> and and just had a good enough win rate that it it got me through. And then the next month was when the uh the mini set came out for the Barons and when Smite came out and I jammed Pirate War. I waited until the mini set came out because it was like day two or day three or something and added uh Smite and the um the the, the cannoneer Defias Cannoneer and uh just sailed in at uh, <laughs> uh oh, that was that not an intended pirate pun i thought it was yar <laughs> <laughs> i really thought it was <laughs> oh my gosh and so i kept it right let me see here one two three four five five mm -hmm. months and then i let my rank slip and uh, i lost it and then i had the 10x for five more months and and i'll tell you like it was just a, a not super fun time and at that point, I was like, "Nope, I, I want it back. I gotta, I gotta climb with it." And really had to, like, Blue Train said, like, crawl my way back into. Gosh, it was like right around. It was between two and three hundred, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's been enough to keep it. And then lately, I've just been trying to stay right around two hundred, and it's worked uh, so far. But nice. Anyways, here here we are now. Now I just am, uh, am a deck stealer, so you can see here. Yeah, zombies. I stole your even shaman list. That I don't know if it's yours or if you got it from someone else. But uh, there there we have it. I probably should save the deck codes here somewhere. But it's been fun, sheep. I appreciate the the, the sheet here. It's been really fun to kind of track, um, and see. And blue train, your name is on here about a hundred times. Uh, with all of the the uh, the the decks that everyone hates, <laughs> odd quest hunter, pirate warrior, murloc shaman. Ew. I need to like. I need to. I need to to diversify. I did. I did it this month with enrage warrior. So that that probably earns me a little bit of. It does. I I've, I will say a little, little bit. Little bit. I've been absolutely. I've been trying to switch it up a little bit lately. And do something kind of different. Actually, this is the first time I've hit with Even Shaman, so that's new. Mm -hmm. And then nice. last month was was Big Priest, and I apologize for that. Uh, in July it was Even Lock, which I had never done before. Uh huh. Um, free Shaman, not done. Uh, back in April was I used Tip the Scales Paladin, and I I thought it was gonna be a meme, and, and it actually was hilarious and and worked. We we give we give El Tino a lot of flack for for being such a tip the scales enjoyer, but uh, I gotta say, um, we well, always knew El Tino was a good player, but he's been crushing it in standard. Um, oh my goodness! So, yeah. yeah, he has. Oh my gosh! Wow! So, uh, a little a little hat tip there to my my good friend El Tino. Oh, a little hat tip the scales, and to... <laughs> yeah, I walked you know... right into that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, you know, a lot of these, yeah, a lot of these decks are, are the big bads, but I, I, you know, like Blue Train has said before, I, you know, you play what's good and, um, I don't, I don't fault anyone for, for that, whether it's enjoyable or not, it's a different story, but, uh, there's a lot of odd quest line hunter and pirate warrior and free shaman here. Fish rogue only once actually. I mean, I've, but this is like, usually I'll, I'll, I'll kind of diversify until I hit D5 and then I'll try to settle down and, and use the same deck from D5 into legend. So, yeah. Whatever. Anyways, that's, I don't really have much to say aside from that little story about how climbing, like trying to get back from the 10 to 11 range is, was pretty brutal, but anyhow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's kind of the show. Might play some Hearthstone tonight. We uh, we had a weekly challenge. Normally Hydra would talk about this, but he got stuck at work, um, and it was kind of a fun one. We uh, are going to extend it by a week, which never okay okay never with Mage in Wild, but I hit with Mage in Standard. Does that count? I know it's so sad. I I uh, I hit 
with mage legend with mage for the first time last month with uh, that spooky scary skeletons mage um, but it was standard i i should try it i i need to do it in 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 wild i've gotten close i got very close back in the day with the giants uh quest mage i've got very close with secret mage i got very close with um uh, mech mage and just never quite got there when mage gets can't like bring myself to play the current iteration of quest mage it's just like i tried uh was it last month with so playing hard and got so far <laughs> but, yeah, but in the end it, it never even mattered exactly <laughs> um i i did i did some co-op with 6j playing quest mage and i just it i, I was it was like rage inducing and i love jay but i could not like I, it was it was bad draw and bad matchups and i just kept losing and losing and losing and i was like this isn't fun anymore i'm done i'll just play something that i know how to play and, and enjoy and uh i not a not really a quest mage enjoyer um so yeah i don't know when when mage has something else then i'll i'll do it anyways uh yeah i want to get back to the weekly challenge because it was pretty fun um yeah the weekly challenge for last week was to create a custom hero but more so because so last week if you missed the show we were talking about emotes uh bm emotes in particular and it was pretty fun we did something that we don't normally do we played a bunch of sound clips and we were laughing and and uh and and ranking our like bm emotes and it was really fun and so the thought was hey let's make a, a challenge where we can create a custom hero but even more so than create their custom emotes and see what people come up with and then bonus points if anyone wants to like record the voice lines and we had a couple people participate but we were kind of hoping for more and so we're going to extend this one by a week but i did want to sh share with everyone the the two that we have because they're really fun yeah but before you do i uh, definitely want to emphasize that creating the the hero and uh writing out the emotes is the kind of required bit recording them is the above and beyond and yeah. while we think the recording is phenomenal and is definitely something that puts it kind of like over the top just writing them down just coming up with the concept and then kind of putting that that into uh the the creator is more than enough to submit for the weekly challenge so please don't think that if you lack recording equipment or uh, aren't comfortable recording your voice you are not gate kept from this weekly challenge. Just definitely wanted to emphasize that before we go into the ones that were submitted this week, which are really, really cool. They're really fun. And, and we had someone really think outside the box for some of these. So let me play them. Um, the first we got from Raygun uh, has a custom dual class hero called the Plague Doctor. It's pretty cool. Uh, it says battle cry for each friendly minion destroy it and summon a 4-4 mindless corpse that copies its death rattle and the hero power is a um, two mana called the curse hero power destroy a friendly minion to summon a 4-4 mindless corpse that copies its death rattle um, and then and it's dual class with priest and warlock yes uh, very fun and there's voice lines I will play uh, uh, it's oops thanks wow well played threat and greetings the, the current voice lines that we have um, they submitted a video and it like OBS didn't want to play it, but I'm going to play it in the background, but you'll hear the, the sounds, um, of, of the character talking here. So, yeah. Is that too low? Let me see. Let me increase it a little bit. Um, yeah, VLC will go up to 125%. So let me, let me increase it here. It goes up to 11. <laughs> and actually, you know what I'll do? Because why not? Let me just do a display capture and then we'll, we'll I'll do it that way. Oh yeah. Very cool editing, by the way. I have to give them lots of credit for that. Mm hmm Okay. Alright, I'm gonna play it now. I just increased the volume, so hopefully we'll be able to hear it. Show me part of my experiments. Very creepy. Solutations. <laughs> too many patients. Yet too little time. My presence is required elsewhere. We are not yet done. 
Very fun. Very fun. I love the editing there. Uh, it's definitely some, some cool sound effects, and, and uh, I like it. Very, very creative, Reagan. Love it. Love to see it. Uh, and we have one more that we got from Naya, and uh, it was a really creative idea, this one as well. Um, let me just pull it up here. Okay, so oh, yeah. so here's the hero. The hero is called Schnozberry at Gripple Banger. <laughs> Which is great, right? This, this is a, a rogue hero. But he, here's the idea, and this is what I really I, I think was interesting. Uh, so Nia says, interesting weekly challenge concept. Um, this is... Uh, Alright, so here's the idea here. Um, let's see. The idea here is a, a mute goblin who can't talk. Instead, that goblin has a musical instrument that he uses in lieu of emoting. And... Uh, and so it reminds me almost of like Suranoia, where like every line is hello, like a version of hello, but it's there's different inflections. And so the idea here is that, or, or like the one of the Murloc ones that like makes various Murgle sounds. And so the idea here is like they they can't speak, but they play music instead for each one. And so that's fun. So it's the uh, uh, Naya says the order here is oops, thanks, wow, well played, uh, greetings, and threaten. And then e, uh, entrance emote, mirror entrance emote, and rope. Um, and so let me just play it because it's audio. Uh, here it is. Is that hallelujah? <laughs> I believe that's the whole thing. And oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, I believe Naya said that uh, the initial idea was to use. Uh, oh, yeah, it says that says I only have one musical instrument in the house. So let's go with the piano being a stand in for the accordion, which I do not own. So number one, big, big props to Naya, who I believe was actually playing the piano for this, yes. which is incredible. I love it. Um, but number two, like the idea you see in the artwork here is uh that those would be played on the accordion, which would make it even that much funnier. Uh, but I love the idea. I think it's very unique and uh, very creative, and I love it. Uh, Hydra, especially, like really wanted to to be able to showcase a bunch of these, and so we um, had talked about uh, holding this one over for one more week in in hopes that we got a couple more submissions, just because um, we really enjoy it. So hopefully, we get a couple more. Yeah, and, and this is a pretty high effort one. So extending the the deadline for this one for a week, I, I feel like is consistent with with the amount of um, effort that that goes in with it as well. So um, Ray Gun and Naya both very clearly put a lot of effort, oh, and uh, it shows. Like like th those are phenomenal. So uh, thank y'all for these submissions, and they are fantastic. And I can't wait to see some more. Yes. Yes. Uh, just as a, you know, quick note, if you have not participated in one of these before and you're interested in doing it, um, join our discord. There's a, a channel there called weekly challenge and you just post them there. So you can post the artwork and, and the, the voice lines. And again, you do not have to record them. That's like a special bonus. Um, but, uh, it, it's, it's enough to write them out. We're just looking to have fun with emotes. So, 
um, links to the Discord, the easiest place to find it, go to our website, borntobewildhs.com. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the homepage, there are links to all the different places you can find us, like YouTube and, and social media and stuff, and the Discord is, is one of them. So we don't have to give some kind of funky uh, URL. You just go to our website and click the link at the bottom of the page. Very cool. Um, yeah, buddy. Yeah. All right, my friends. Well, that uh, is basically a wrap for this week's show appreciate y'all hanging out with me on on friday night uh i suppose we probably should do one last thing before we call it an evening here because we're doing this now i thought i was gonna get to dodge this (laughs) i don't know what i'm gonna ask you though that's see this is the problem this is the this is the problem um is that i i never know what to ask craig craig could always do a great job with it and i will say uh uh, Blue Train, uh, since I have you here, do you eat your uh, macaroni and cheese with the fork or a spoon? I, I, I don't know. You, she, do you have any question. you have any burning questions for our, our, our friend Blue Train over there? What is the Canadian version of a social security number? I realize that I could ask Hydra, but I don't know. It's called a social insurance number. Hmm. And it, it has the exact same function. Cool. Just like how we have postal codes instead of a zip code. But it's like the same thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Identical. So something a little bit more subjective. What is your favorite uh, Americanization of a Canadian uh, phrase or, you know, so- social security number versus social insurance number? What's your favorite Canadian version of an American phrase? So the... The Canadian version, that's your favorite, and the American version, that's your favorite. So I like the way we spell certain words better in Canada. I like gray with an A and like, um, you know, neighbor with a U. I like that better, Uh probably because I'm accustomed to it. But, and I'm going to get into trouble for this sheep. Uh Uh-oh. Z is so much better than Z. Oh, most definitely. I I, The first time I heard that, I was so confused. Zed, bruh. (laughs) <laughs> no, nobody, nobody calls them that up here but but i i i prefer z over Z. that's um, although one time someone on a conference call at work was mocking me for my canadianisms which i i don't generally have a pretty no. noticeable canadian accent just because i'm from quebec um but i was purposefully spelling things with z instead of z just to upset that individual <laughs> <laughs> but generally generally i i say z instead of z because i just think it flows better so there you go that's i great. love that pettiness that is perfect thank you <laughs> by the way a very, a very specific question that i had specific answers for and no we did not prep the question or brief no. the answers in advance <laughs> that's right that's right i will say all right wiser words were never spoken and you heard that on more to be wild okay so i watched uh tusk this past week have you seen yeah. that <laughs> no oh, i've gosh. heard really interesting things about it though you know that's a good word for it and i so it it's a kevin smith uh i would very loosely call it a, a horror movie very loosely it's more like a horror comedy um mm-hmm. <laughs> Kevin Smith version of a horror movie. So so the basic premise <laughs> the basic premise is this the main character is a podcaster and he's traveling to Canada to meet up with somebody to record this podcast and and it he does like, you know, strange things or whatever and and he gets there and it turns out that this person died and so He's like, well, I'm already, I'm already here. Like, I, I want to still record my, my podcast. Uh, is there someone else that I can record it with? And he's in this, I, I don't know, some kind of shop, and uh, it's like a convenience store or something. And and sees like a, a flyer and calls this guy, and and then he's talking to the store clerks. He goes, hey, how do I get to this location? And the gal goes, um, oh, it's a, a boot an hour and a half away or whatever. And, and he gives her such a hard time for, Oh, 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 you're so Canadian. Uh, a boot, a boot. Ha ha ha. And, and she's like, I hate Americans. And it was so funny. <laughs> I just, uh, it was great. It was so great. Do you guys really say a boot? I've heard Hydra say it before and it's very funny. So but. it depends where you're from. 
so people people speak that way like west of montreal and like east of vancouver mm. like so hydra's from alberta so like i could see him saying that but like where craig is from like in ontario that's where it's really pronounced mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't i don't speak like that but like some people insist that i do i i i don't believe i do but i i mean i've heard you transition a... from like english to french and back to english and I, i'm thoroughly entertained every time you do it uh, I'm 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 rusty though because I don't I mean ever I've, I've been here for like twelve years and I don't speak French anymore but uh, this is because the way so people from Montreal who are native English speakers we have our own kind of accent and in, in idiosyncrasies that are mm -hmm. are not commonplace throughout the rest of the country but the whole like typical way that people speak like with a Canadian accent, it's more of like an Ontario thing. I, I don't know. It, it's regional, like Ontario Maritimes. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a, a generalization it's, has some truth to it, but not, not really. Oh, I mean, can you say a, a boot just to appease me and then I'll stop. <laughs> no do to boot it, Nate. <laughs> 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 glorious i you see i watched uncle buck when i was like 10 years old and <laughs> i've still never seen that but you know film i, <laughs> I mean i know it's a movie but <laughs> film it, yeah yeah i remember it being really funny and it's been a long long time and i'm i'm sure that it probably like most of the movies at that time did not age well and was probably uh uh very inappropriate but I, I recall it being funny. So, anyhow. Well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah.